All right, today I'm taking a look at the new two auto soldering station. So this is the DS90, but this is also the ESD safe version. So we got a nice big instruction manual and I like that they put that right on top. So this is the cord for grounding, which is a new thing for this station. That's very important. We got some extra tips. So you can see there's some good variety there. This has a very nice rubber textured grip on it. So that feels awesome. Yeah, it feels really good. And it's even written on here, ESD safe. So if you have a few of these soldering stations next to each other, it's easy to tell which one belongs to which. So that's good. Comes with tweezers, solder sucker, some solder and a holder. You got the holder there. So I do like this plate right here is for uh, anti-static. So if you feel like you've developed a charge, you can just touch it and it will release that charge. So you're not gonna be destroying anything you're working on. Slap that guy on. That's a really nice fit. So that's good. A lot of these I like to wobble around like you just kind of set it in and I'm always afraid that the tip is going to be touching something. It's going to be either pulling heat away from the gun or it's going to be melting something inside. But this one is a very nice fit. So I like the way they did that. On the back we got the plug for the ground. So the machine should be grounded and I believe that this is going to attach to the board. So you would put that somewhere on the board on the ground so that if any charge was to develop on the board, it would automatically go to the machine and then out. Now we don't have to worry about destroying the equipment that you're working on. We've got two screws set here. So this is for the holder. And so I do like these. I especially like that I can have it out like this or I can screw it to the side. So if I want to, I can screw it onto here and then I can move the whole unit around anywhere I need it. But I personally like having the mobility of being able to move this around. So I can essentially throw this on here and then I can draw my solder out and work real close to it. So I do like that this one stands up on its own very well. It definitely doesn't feel like it wants to fall over. So that's a very good thing. It's got spots over here for putting all the tips. So you can have everything out and ready to go. There we go. So let's see exactly what kind of ground we're getting out of this. So this is the cable in the back and it's got its own little alligator clamp. So I'm going to attach that to the negative terminal. Okay. Okay, so this does ground to the ground pin. So I don't actually have to take this thing and plug it into a ground somewhere. So this, this and this are connected at the ground. So that's good. Okay, so we have a connection right here, so I can discharge whatever built up static I have in my hand right here, or I could touch the tip to it. Although that shouldn't matter because this, yes it does. So this has a connection to the ground. So that's the important part right here. This is actually grounding the tip. And that's really good. So if you're working on sensitive equipment, there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. The first one is that you should have a, a static wrist strap. So this is something that's just gonna have a piece of metal and a little wire that will attach to the body of whatever you're working on. That way you don't touch it and pop it and blow it up. But with this, with most soldering irons, you can actually build up a charge in the tip. And then when you go to touch it, you could deliver that charge to the equipment. So that can be very bad. So I can hook this up to the equipment and that will discharge anything that's on the equipment and it will equalize the charge to the tip. So I don't have to worry about any kind of electrostatic discharge. So this is awesome. All right, so first things first. So this is 30 grams of 0 0.8 millimeter. There's a lot of ways to do this. This is just the way that I like. You can see I wrapped a little coil around there. So as soon as it heats up, it'll melt that. All right, so I'm gonna flip it on. Perfect, look at that. That heat up real quick. 150 degrees Celsius, and I'm gonna put it up to about 200. We'll go with 199, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I think it heats up nice and quick. All right, let's go up to 250, 260. And 300. Starting to get some smoke out of it. So it should be melting pretty soon. I do really like that we've got both Fahrenheit and Celsius on here. So I can see both of them at the same time. That's awesome. So we do got this guy melting. All right. That's good. So I'll wipe it off. And hit it again. We just want to do this a few times. 
just to make sure that we've got this thing well tinned. Always a good idea on a new tip. It's taken the solder very well, so this is a good tip, and it's also good solder. So that's a very good thing. And it's taken it fairly high up the tip as well. Okay. So now I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to leave it there. All right. Let's drop a couple of capacitors in here. I still got this at 300 degrees Celsius. I just turned it on. And now it's up to temperature. Love that. Love how fast these things are these days. Just gotta get that stuff off. Retin it real quick. It's a good idea to just keep doing that as you're working. Yeah, nice and clean. Give it a quick touch up. Drop it in, shut it off. Now this board doesn't really give me a lot of options for using this grounding clip, uh, just because the you know the, none of these connections are are connected to each other. So I could put it on here, but it wouldn't really do anything for me. If I had something like this. If I wanted to work on these LEDs, I could uh, snap it onto one of these or even both of these, like that. And then I would have a nice ground going all the way across. So I wouldn't have to worry about any charge jumping from one place to another. So, But another thing you could use this for, even though it's not really designed for it, but if I was working with something that was really sensitive to heat, I could also use this as a heat sink. Right? So I could solder on here, and some of the heat that would normally go to the component would actually go to the alligator clip. Now, it's definitely not designed for that, and I wouldn't want to put a lot of heat on here, but I could use that in a pinch. And plus, on top of that, it would also be a way for the static to discharge. So, really good for sensitive stuff. And of course, this thing does come with tweezers, and these are nice, real sharp tweezers. I always love these ones that 2Auto provides. Uh, ESD15, so I think these are electrostatic discharge safe, too. So, But they're real sharp. They're good for holding tiny objects, you know, something like that, preventing yourself from getting burned or even just jabbing out really tiny areas. So great tweezers there. And then we got the solder sucker. Make it a little hotter. I'm gonna go with 350. And I'm just gonna add a nice blob on here. There we go. Sometimes it takes a couple tries uh, to get all of it, but it's all good. That's what we're here for.
not too bad. Yeah, I might have to hit it like a couple times on some of these, but even the like the tiny little bit that's left in there, I could probably just break off. But yeah, effective tools. I love it.